To extra depth, El Paso and Albuquerque, the two cities, share a problem 260 miles apart. Their professional soccer teams must play in a baseball stadium. Voters in the Duke City are weighing in on a plan for a taxpayer-funded new soccer stadium. And tonight, extra perspective as ABC 7's Kate Beery explores whether Albuquerque's conflict could be El Paso's future. Only on ABC 7, united in sport, but divided in support. New Mexico United. It's not just the team's name. What's the beautiful thing about soccer? It's a global sport. The fans in these stands share a love of the game. But their favorite soccer players must compete in a baseball stadium. I, it's not ideal. It's a great place to get started. There's a lot that goes into playing in a baseball field. There's a pitching mound. There's an infield, so you have to tear that down. You have to put grass on top of the dirt. It's a good short-term solution, but not in the long term. Peter Trevisani owns the team. And the rivalry is amazing with El Paso. He's asking fans to support a new stadium at a cost of $50 million to taxpayers. Uh, I think it's a great idea. It's what the city needs. I think it's going to promote economic development. The fans might be united, but taxpayers in the city of Albuquerque are not. The last thing we need is a stadium. It is going to raise rents. It is going to raise property taxes. The Barela's neighborhood in Albuquerque is a preferred location for the proposed multi-million dollar stadium. And organizers with Stop the Stadium argue that it would drive up the prices of houses and push away residents who've been in the area for decades. Bex Hampton leads a group called Stop the Stadium. And it's really offensive that they are trying to build a stadium with our taxpayer money rather than address the issue of housing in this city and state. Working class people are already being squeezed for every dime that they're making. Annalie Desonier also opposes the plan. She used to live just six blocks away from 2nd Street and Iron. That's a proposed stadium location. But during the pandemic, she said her landlord ended her month-to-month -month agreement. Because she personally could not find housing. In the Barelas neighborhood, there is homelessness and drug activity. Hey, excuse me. You know how to find some crack? Move along, honey. Yeah. We're have her doing stuff here. Huh? A man interrupted our interview looking for cocaine. <laughs> when Desonier moved out of Barelas, she said her monthly rent jumped from $800 to $1,500. The last thing we need is a stadium. It's a risk that Peter Trevisani and his multimillionaire friends don't want to make. You are a wealthy man, and one of the activists suggested you pay for the stadium. What's your response to that? Absolutely, it's important that we build stadiums. I believe in a pi private public partnership. So I'm individually making a contribution. Our other owners are making a major contribution. The team has pledged to invest $10 million and pay another $100,000 a year to the city of Albuquerque. Everybody is pitching in so that we can do it together. And each community has their own needs. The city would own the stadium and New Mexico United would act as a tenant, hoping to attract a women's soccer team and more visitors to Albuquerque. That's how you grow a city. That's how you grow community. And that's how you export El Paso or you export Albuquerque to the rest of the world. United in sport, but divided in support. Yeah, Kate Beery, ABC7. So what about a soccer stadium for El Paso? It was the United Soccer League that had a goal to have every one of its teams play in a soccer-specific stadium by 2020, which of course did not happen. We reached out to the USL, but we have not yet heard back. Mountain Star, uh, Mountain Star Sports Group, which owns Locomotive FC and the El Paso Chihuahuas, tells ABC7 its goals have been to improve quality of life and make the borderplex more economically competitive. In a statement, it says, quote, We've commented for several years that a soccer-specific stadium in or near downtown will be another important step in that direction. However, our attention the past 18 to 24 months has been on the pandemic. Now, the team's other focus now, a playoff game this Friday evening at Southwest University Park.